these two guys walk into a bar. One looks over at the other one and punches him right in the face. The other guy gets knocked clean out. Sound like a joke? Not so much. So when we take a look at what happens when a person gets knocked out, especially from a traumatic injury, whether it's a bar fight, a fight, um, getting hit in the head by some object, falling to the ground and hitting their head, um, skateboarding, roller skating, bicycling, whatever the impact is that causes the person's brain to shock so hard that it disrupts the electrical pattern and the chemoelectrical pathways that the person is knocked completely unconscious, we look at this in emergency medicine as a serious potential head injury. The mechanism of injury was such that it could have actually caused some type of rupture in the membrane or into the actual brain tissue. And if that rupture occurs where there is a vessel that can bleed, especially an, arteri an arterial type of vessel, we could have a closed head injury or a closed head bleed that could cause the person to die. So how do you know if it's really a serious injury or not? Well, it, it actually doesn't take a whole lot to knock somebody out from a head injury. So the fact that they actually got knocked out does indicate that it was a pretty serious bonk on the head, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to have a closed head injury that could cost them their lives. What's gonna be important probably is to get them to be seen by the medical professionals potentially be able to do a scan of the head to see if there's any type of bruising or bleeding that could cost them their life. If they can rule that out, then normally what we see is brain swelling. And that is a, a basic indicator that the person had this coup contra coup type of slap inside the skull where the brain now is swelling a little bit or fluid is, is kind of pushing in on it and it's causing a headache it might cause dizziness, nausea, um, it could make them feel fatigued, um, they might not really remember the incident a whole lot, it's, it's not uncommon to have short-term memory loss caused from this type of, of traumatic head injury. So what do we do as a first aid provider? Well, it's important to think about what exactly happened. The person got knocked out cold, they got a pretty traumatic slap to the brain. So, it never is wrong to have that person evaluated at the emergency room, have them checked out and make sure that they don't have some kind of growing bruise or a bleed going on inside the head. If the individual, after hitting their head and getting knocked out, um, never really regains consciousness or they slur their speech or they're vomiting or they are out of it, they don't really know what they're saying, maybe they're repeating their questions over and over. What happened? What happened? Oh, okay. Oh, well, what happened? What happened? Oh, okay. Oh, well, where am I? What happened? That's a pretty good indicator that they've got something going on that needs to be looked at at a higher level of medicine. If, if we think they potentially also have a neck injury, which is uh, a potential whenever somebody gets hit on the head, um, falls, there's a lot of trauma, that whiplash type of effect, and they are complaining of numbness or tingling, or you just think that the trauma was bad enough that they might have actually hurt their neck, we're going to try to help them minimize the movement of their head and neck. We're gonna get emergency medicine on the way, 911, and we're gonna make sure that we stay with the victim roll them onto their side as carefully as possible if they do start vomiting so that the vomit can flow out, especially if they can't control their own airway. And then if they do go into um, uh, a respiratory arrest or full cardiac arrest, we'll be standing by ready to actually do um, CPR and, and hopefully buy time so that they can get to the emergency room, get a shunt put in their head, um, relieve that pressure and maybe save their life. Head injuries are a serious thing. There's a, there's a lot of accounts of people that have hit their head so hard that they've caused that kind of swelling and bruising or bleeding and died as a result of that. So I'm afraid we should not really take it as a joke. We should be thinking, wow, they hit their head so hard or got their head, 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 or got their head hit so hard that it knocked them out. 
that's a pretty serious hit and we should be bringing them in for evaluation and making sure that they're okay before they go to bed, the bleeding gets um, out of control, the pressure gets out of control, and they may not wake up in the morning. So good question about head injuries. Again, the, in recap, observe the patient, see if they're recovering okay, make sure they see, be evaluated um, by a physician so that we can find out if they have bleeding going on. If they rule that out, then it's probably a concussion, so then just pain relief, watch them, you know, probably every hour for the first few hours, then every couple hours after that. But we like to observe them and make sure that they're waking up okay for the first 24 hours after a concussion or a head injury. Then, uh, on the other side of that, if it is a serious bleed, we want them into the hospital so that if they do a scan and they can see that there's bleeding, they can get them into surgery right away, try to relieve that pressure and uh, maybe save their life. As a first aider, it's airway breathing circulation. We're gonna be standing by trying to minimize movement, protect their neck in case they have a neck injury, and activating emergency medical services. So, I hope this helps. Keep on rescuing, and from Roy and Rescue, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.